stay right here on Faith Street, y'all. The box you asked for is coming. Everything on my vision board, I get. I, I put, I built on my house one time. My wife wanted a special kind of car. And I built the garage, the extra garage on the house. She came out there and saw them. She said, Steve, what are you doing? I said, I'm building an extra garage. She said, Steve, we got enough cars. What do you need with another garage? I said, don't worry about it. Two years went by. I had been looking for this car. I went to dealerships. They said, sir, there are none in that color. I said, she want a white. I said, so I went to the dealership. I said, I want you to get this car in for my wife. She said, sir, there are none in the country and none being made. I said, okay. But when the car come in, could you accept it into your dealership and call me when it gets here? He said, sir, I done told you. I can pull it up on the computer. There are no cars in that color. That make a model. Do you want another color? I said, no, my wife won't white. She said, sir, we don't have that. I said, I've already built the garage. I've already built the garage. All my garages have chandeliers in them. I don't have doors that go over. All my cars have chandeliers hanging over. And I have marble floors in my garage. I like stuff like that because I saw it one time. So I said, I've already, I've already built the garage. He said, sir, there are no cars like that anywhere in a computer base. I said, I just need for you when the car comes in. So a year went by. I said, any word on the car? He said, no, I've called the factory. They're not even making anymore in that color. I said, okay, I'm, st I'm looking for this color right here. He said, sir, we don't have it. I said, I'm going to give it to her for her birthday, October 10th, 2016. She said, he said, sir, that's impossible. I said, no, it's not. No, it's not. It's just a car that I'm asking for in a particular color. How that's impossible? He said, sir, I can't find the car. I ain't asked you to. I asked you when it come through, would you accept it into your dealership and call me? That's all I asked you for. Two weeks before my wife's birthday, I got a phone call. It was Perillo from Gold Coast in Chicago. He said, Steve Harvey. He said, are you sitting down? I said, no, I'm standing up. What's happening? He said, you're not going to believe this. A guy bought a car a year ago. It's been sitting in his garage. It has eight miles on it. He bought it to me to turn in to me and ask him, how much would I give him for? I said, what is it? He said, it's the white car you've been looking for. I said, I'll be up there to get it. He said, this is unbelievable. I said, that God I serve, he's an unbelievable God. I don't listen to what nobody tell me. Once I write it down, I write the vision and make it plain, it will come. Surely it will come at an appointed time. It doesn't matter that nobody sees it. It doesn't matter that it's visible to other people. All you got to do is write it down and believe it. God is greatness, man, all day long. What he's done for me, he'll do the same thing for you. But you got to write the vision. Go home and read Habakkuk 2 and 2. Go home and read Bible verse Habakkuk 2 and 2. I'm going to give you the two scriptures that changed my entire life. Now, I had heard these scriptures growing up, but it didn't, it didn't sit with me until I was homeless. The first scripture, you have not because you ask not. Now listen to me. I cannot tell you how important that single scripture is. A lot of the problems I was having, and you may be having just like me, is because what I was asking God for was the wrong stuff. I kept going to him too small. I was praying for stuff that really didn't need that much of a prayer. Lord, help me make my rent. Well, don't he always? Don't you always get your rent? What about if you change that? Suppose you said, Lord, help me make my mortgage. You think God don't know you ain't got the down payment? You really think God don't know you need another job? He know all of that. But if you don't ask him for it, he can't. God don't give you what you want. He give you what you believe. See, you've been blowing it. If you up your ass, he ups his gill. That's his promise. You have not because you ask not. Lord, help me fix my car so I can make it to work. 
Stop praying over these raggedy cars. Why don't you ask God for a car that don't need fixing? Oh, you think that's too big for him? Is that it? So you don't ask this great God for big stuff because you don't see how you can get it. You're not supposed to see how you can get it. You're just supposed to ask him for it. See, the how-to is none of your business. You keep getting in the way of the blessing because you all up in the how-to part of it. Show me the scripture where he tells you to figure out how to do anything. He don't ask you the how-to nothing. You have not caused your ass not. Second, you don't have it written down. Everything you're asking God for, it has to be written down. This is not a theory. This is another scripture. I'm going to give it to you. It's in your Bible. Habakkuk 2 and 2. It says, write the vision and make it plain so that he who reads it will run to it. And even though it tarry, that means take a long time. Wait for it, for surely it will come at an appointed time. That's in your Bible. That's in the copy you got. That ain't in the rich people's Bible. That's in the copy you got. It's in the drawer at the hotel. It's Habakkuk 2 and 2. Write the vision and make it plain. Everything you want, you're supposed to write down. I'm telling you, man, this is how it works. You know, some rich people don't really have degrees. Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg they ain't got a degree between them. But they got more degrees working for them than a thermometer. Education ain't in the Bible. Harvard is not in there. UCLA is not in the Bible. You just need the word. You need to know what it's saying applied to you. You know why? Because it's a promise of his. He ain't never lied. He always come through. If I was you, I'd try that. If you keep doing what you've been doing, you're going to keep getting what you've been getting. If somebody came and told me to do that, I would at least give that a try. Those two scriptures can change your mind. Everything you're going through is preparing you for what you ask God for. The bigger the stuff you ask God for, the greater the requirements. Now, if you don't want nothing to happen to you, quit asking for stuff. You can simplify your life right now. Quit wanting something. But I got to tell you something, though. That's a hard life. You know, the Bible says to whom much is given, much is required. But when you ain't got nothing, you know, where, where my rent coming from? That, that's, that's every month you got to figure that out? How we going to eat? We figuring out how we going to make these ends meet? Every month, that's hard. So I've been at every economic level there is. I've been stark raving poor. And I've been well off. It's way better to have money. Don't let nobody fool you. I don't know what somebody told you about money, but I've had none for an extended period of time. I mean none. Now you got some problems with money that you can't imagine. When you get it, you gonna have. It ain't a week go by. I don't get two to three pieces of bad news. But you know what I do? I take all that bad news with the knowledge that God must have something else for me. I live my life in expectation. Therefore, guess what? He gives me what I expect. I expect a life of abundance. You think they take this show from under me? You think, you think I'm finna crumble? Don't even worry about Steve Hart. Don't you know he got something else for me? Something way bigger, something way better? The people make decisions. They think they're crumbling me all the time. They've been making decisions about me for years out here. They can't do nothing with me. I keep showing up over and over and over and over. I'm from Welch, West Virginia. I grew up in the hood. I've been shot. I've been laying on the street that's named Steve Harvey Boulevard. And on the street they said I was dying on. They thought I wasn't going to get up out that street. That same block I was dying on is named after me now. You can't tell me nothing about what God can't do. God do the impossible, man. See, I expect great things to happen to me, even in the midst of trouble. I dare you to start writing everything down you want. I dare you. I dare you. I dare you to call. You Look, man, if you call out God on his word, you better be ready. Because you're about to get checked. If you call him out on his promise, he's going to check you. 
I've been checked over and over and over till I got it. I don't even fool around no more. I go to God, I ask him for it. Then I write it down. Maybe you just want $100,000 a year. Put it down. Maybe you're just trying to do something nice for your kids or your grandkids. Write it down. How much you want to make a year? How much would you like to see in a savings account? Write this stuff down. This is critical information. It's not a magic trick, man. Quit tripping. This is real. This is how it works. Rich people do this all the time. We ain't out here just making paper because we that good at it. And God love us more than he love you. That ain't why we getting it. We getting it because we understand the principles of success and we apply them to our life. Don't let these rich people out here fool you. All these people out here got vision boards. They might not tell you about God, but that's their problem. I don't do nothing without mentioning him because I would be nothing without him. I'm awash without the Lord. Do you hear me? I'm nothing without him. I'd still be living in the car if it wasn't for him. But he came and he got me because I kept asking him over and over and over and over. I dare you to go home and call him on his word. Now, be prepared now. You're going to get checked. He's going to check you because you don't question it. Whatever position you find yourself in today, we put ourselves there by a series of thoughts and actions. Thoughts turn into things. That's very important to know. So let's look at both sides of it. For people who think negative thoughts, it turns into negative things. And the direct opposite is true for those who think positive thoughts. It turns into positive things. That's the deal. It's, it's as simple as that, folks. Thoughts become things. So the one glaring question for all of us always is on a daily basis, what are you thinking? What are your thoughts? What are you thinking? What are your thoughts? Because this is a fact of life. This is biblical. This is spiritual. This is written. This is philosophical. This is the law of the universe. This is just the way it is. Now, and here the cold part, folks. It don't matter if you believe me or not. It does not matter if you have never been explained this or not. And it does not matter if you think it works in your life or not. It don't matter. Listen to me. It is the way it is. It is it's just whatever it's the law of the universe. You call whatever you want. However you got to dress this thing up. Because this is all it is. So when I say that you are where we are today. Because we thought ourselves here. Oh you best to believe that's true. You thought yourself here. No one else. See, let me explain something. I got people around me who so badly want to take credit for it, but I don't allow it because I keep pointing to the heavens by grace and mercy, by blessings from God. My life is because God has seen it to be so. Oh, but I got plenty of people around me who want credit for it and want you to not give credit to God and give it to them. I got that, but it's okay. It's so clear to me what my father was saying to me, man. I get it as I get older and older. People come into your life for seasons. And I guess that's the same thing. You know, they season up, they gone. Well, you know, here the way they try to hold you, though. Oh, you going to forget where you come from? Oh, you ain't going to keep it real no more? I don't want to go back where I come from. I don't want to keep it that real no more. It was real enough for me living in a car. I had enough of that real. No, I don't keep it real. I want to go keep it dreamy. I want to go keep it fantasizing. I want to keep it out of this world. I want to see what that's like. So, no, I ain't going to forget where I come from. But you ain't going to hold me to that. Thoughts become things. Where are the things that you want written down? What do you think about the most? How grateful are you for what all God has done? Where you at with that? If all you thinking about is your debt, if all you're thinking about is what you ain't got, if all you thinking about is every time I turn around, I'm sick, if all you thinking about is the things in life that you're lacking, and if thoughts become things, how much debt you think you're going to stay in? 
How much lacking you think you finna feel in your life? How much more stuff you finna not have? Because you keep thinking about it all the time. When you gonna be grateful? When you gonna say thank you? When it's gonna come out your mouth, man, that I, I, I may not be where I wanna be, but I sure am grateful for what you've given me so far, for the things I have today, because I don't have to have these things. You know what that does? That then opens up room for more stuff to come your way to be grateful for. If you are ungrateful for the things we got, if we can't show no gratitude for what, what we have, why would God give us some more stuff to be ungrateful for? What would he do that for? Ta-da! Anybody feel me right now? Because I want you to feel me. I want you to understand and come to the understanding. I'm not saying you ain't because there's so many people got a deeper understanding than me about this whole thing. I promise you they do. Listen to me. I'm just trying to get you to walk up in this light, man, so you can go on with your life and quit tripping yourself out with your thoughts because thoughts become things. TV to me is just, what do I really think? I'm going to give you my honest opinion. And then, you know, if you don't like that, tune in tomorrow. Yeah. That's the thing about opinions, man. Everybody's entitled to them. I, I was watching Joel Osteen on TV one day, and he said, people's opinion of you is none of your business. Nor should you make it yours. You, you get in a lot of trouble worrying about what somebody think about you. When really, what difference do it make? Whether they wrong or right. And what, what difference do it make? The majority of people who have a negative viewpoint of you really don't even know you. What I found about being successful is it wasn't me who changed. It was people's opinion of me that changed. You know, I got more, but and I'm the same dude. But your opinion of me has changed. Now you think, I think I'm all that. When in actuality, I really am humble by all this. I really can't believe God let me have this. I really do understand that I am here, but by the grace of God. I'm clear about that. I, I, I am so clear about that. It ain't me. It's not me. See, I know the decisions I made, and I know how it got me where I got to. I know how my life turned out when I gave it over to him. I gave my life to God. Now, I may not be the Christian you think I ought to be, but once again, your opinion of me, it doesn't matter to me. I've just learned not to allow people's opinion of me to bother me or stop me publicly, man, I've been ridiculed and ate alive on that internet. You this, he think he this, I can't stand him. He this, he that. You know, I've been everything on the internet. I don't care. When you get through reading that stuff, cut your TV on. Turn it to almost any channel you want to. Seven days a week. The little dude that you keep hating on, that God I serve, he ain't hated me yet. He ain't hated me not now time. And I've discovered something. Look, man, what God got for you, nobody, no hater, no employer, no co-worker can stop nothing God has for you. God is in the blessing business, but better than that, he's in the forgiving business. See, if God wasn't a forgiving God, I'm not here today. But God had to forgive me over and over and over and over and over and over and over. I can't count the times he done forgave me. See, I just never let my failures define me. See, when you make a mistake, just get them and go again. What you tripping for? I made public mistakes, man. Let me tell you something, man. When I, oh, oh Miss Universe, I have to apologize. I took that myself. You know how many people wrote me off? You know how many letters I got from TV execs? We're proud of you for doing the right thing, but oh my God. Oh my God, a horrible mistake. I hope you're gonna be okay. You hope I'm gonna be, what, my career over cause of that? People wrote me off. You know what, I just got up. I got up, I kept coming to work. <laughs> I just kept coming, I kept showing up. Cause eventually, well, what you gonna do? The time has come. You know, my father used to always tell me something. You gonna either get over it or die mad. You got two choices. You can get past it or you can die mad. Now, if you want to die mad, tear your ass off and just die mad. 
But God forgave me, so I got up and I kept going. Your mistakes don't define you. Life is 10% of what happened to you. is 90% what you do about it. I just stood up like I had some dignity. And I just kept performing, kept telling jokes, kept entertaining people. To the part now where it don't even matter. That pageant is the biggest pageant they've ever had. Everybody tune in and see who the come and say this year. Just, just keep living, y'all. Keep waking up in the morning.